SpaceX's massive Starship rocket continues to pass crucial tests as it moves closer to putting the Mars-bound launch system into orbit for the first time. The Starship's super-heavy prototype Booster 7 and its seven Raptor engines were launched on Monday, September 19th, by the private space business. According to Space.com, this was the most next-generation engines that have ever undergone continuous testing. The engine test is essential for getting Starship ready for its projected first orbital trip, which is planned to happen in the next few months. Following that test flight, Starship will be able to send crewed missions to Mars and bring astronauts back to the moon's surface. So I know you are all eager to know about the test. Before that, welcome to Incredible Tech! Starship's Super Heavy Booster Engine Test Booster 7 testing started more than four months ago in early April. By afternoon, SpaceX had finished testing the Spin Prime with the Super Heavy Booster. For a static fire test of seven Raptor engines, they restarted, cooling the engines. At 12.47 p.m., SpaceX executed an amazing static fire test that lasted almost eight seconds. Super Heavy Booster B7 passed the test with no obvious problems and was safely depressurized and disconnected. The seven Raptor engines also seemed to run well and finish their seven-second burn with no apparent issues. After a sporadic line of scrubs, SpaceX has successfully launched the 60th operational Starlink satellite. On September 18th at 8.18 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, the Falcon 9 rocket B-1067 launched for the sixth time. It was launched 66 days after its fifth launch, carrying 54 Starlink satellites for SpaceX's Starlink 434 mission. After a five-day delay caused by unknown complications from a scheduled September 11th launch attempt, SpaceX planned to launch the mission for the first time on September 13th. Lightning threats forced the organization to abandon the attempt an hour before liftoff. Weather on September 14th led to SpaceX to aborting the second attempt an hour before liftoff as well. On September 15th, only 29 seconds before liftoff, the third attempt was canceled again due to weather. And on the fourth try, a weather-related scrub occurred just before takeoff. SpaceX eventually discovered a break in Florida's warm weather on September 18th. A record-breaking string of successes by SpaceX's Falcon 9 is continuing at a rate that may soon make it the quickest rocket ever to launch, as scores of Starlink missions start to blend together. It's difficult to be shocked that Starlink 434 was successfully finished. The Falcon 9B-1067 rocket coasted into space and returned to Earth with SpaceX's 68th consecutive successful booster landing after around three minutes of powered descent. Falcon 9's underappreciated upper stage went into an orbit around 300 kilometers above the Earth, rotated around, and simultaneously deployed 54 Starlink 1.5 satellites wearing, weighing 16.7 tons in a stack. The rocket's two reusable fairing sections were probably still 10 to 20 minutes away from contacting the Atlantic Ocean after the fast deployment. They were finally lifted out of the water beneath their GPS-guided parafoils for subsequent flights. Starlink 434 was the 42nd launch for SpaceX in 2022, continuing the company's trend of one launch every 6.2 days since the year's start. Less than three years after SpaceX started operating launch operations, it still leaves more than 3,000 active Starlink satellites in Earth orbit. It is indicating that the bulk of all operational satellites is still likely owned and operated by SpaceX. SpaceX is planning two more Starlink launches, 435 and 436, well before the end of September. As of September 15th, both missions were planning launches on September 19th and September 26th, which is not unusual for SpaceX in 2022. The unusual agreement in both unofficial manifestos was that SpaceX planned to launch Starlink 434, 435, and 436 using the same pad as Cape Canaveral Space Force Station LC-40. Even if those plans were based on Starlink 434 launching on September 13th before all of its weather delays, SpaceX would have had to break the LC-47.7 day turnaround record by about 25% and finish a second launch just seven days later. Despite the fact that Starlink 434's delays have called that plan into question, the fact that SpaceX believed it was feasible in the first place shows that the business intends to get even more performance out of LC-40. In terms of launch cadence, it is already the most significant pad. The launch of Starlink 436 may occur in the late September or October. If the month of September slips into October, SpaceX has two quick client satellite launches planned on for October 5th and October 13th that are likely to take priority over any internal Starlink mission. There are only 16 days until the next commercial launch of the LC-40, and until October 3rd, NASA's crew launch will be using SpaceX's second East Coast launch site. In order to avoid pushing back one of the Starlink missions into October, SpaceX would have to launch Starlink's 435 and 436 only four or five days apart, as well as one just four or five days after Starlink 434. A delay for Starlink 435 is now provisionally slated for September 23rd, making a delay for Starlink 436 more plausible, although a launch attempt before the end of the month is still possible. 
After the second spin prime with the seven engines, SpaceX refueled Booster 7. It followed the same steps and fired the same seven engines for around five seconds. Musk later suggested that the test went well and that there is no obvious problems. It possibly also broke the record for maximum thrust produced by a vehicle tested at Starbase, in addition to setting a new record for the most Raptors that have ever been ignited concurrently on a single prototype. The seven improved Raptor V2 engines might have momentarily generated more than 1,600 tons, about 3.6 million lbf, of thrust, which is about comparable to two Falcon 9 boosters. Once Super Heavy ignites as few as 20 of its 33 engines at maximum blast, it will be the most powerful liquid rocket booster ever tested. The Super Heavy is around 69 meters tall and 9 meters wide. Musk revealed that after the most recent round of testing, SpaceX will once more return Booster 7 to the production facility at Starbase for inexplicable robustness upgrades. The first full wet dress rehearsal of a fully built two-stage Starship will be Starbase's next big test, according to Musk. He also predicts that Super Heavy's first 33-engine static fire test will take place in a few weeks. Booster 8 will begin basic proof testing at SpaceX's South Texas orbital launch pad once Booster 7 has returned to the factory and has been finished following a relatively slow six-month assembly. Seven hours after Booster 7's seven-stage static burn, SpaceX had already started preparing for that exchange when it moved to Booster 8 to the launch pad. By the time B-7's modifications were accomplished, it's possible that B-8 will have completed proof testing and be ready to return to the factory for Raptor installation. If everything goes more smoothly than it did with B-7, this would result in a very quick transfer. The FAA has yet to grant SpaceX a launch permit for the Starship's initial test trip into orbit. The corporation overcame a significant obstacle in June when the environmental evaluations was finished, allowing the launch to proceed but necessitating numerous changes to the mission plan. The Starship will be able to launch from Starbase and go briefly into orbit before executing a splashdown landing in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of Hawaii as soon as SpaceX receives regulatory approval. Soon after launch, Super Heavy will disengage from the Starship and make an attempt to touch down on a repurposed drilling rig in the Gulf of Mexico. Musk responded to a comment that compared the size of the Starship to other rockets such as NASA's Saturn V and the brand new Space Launch System by outlining why Starship is crucial for space exploration. Starship will be an incredible enabler for science. Full reusability and high production rate drive several orders of magnitude improvement in dollars per kilogram to orbit and beyond, he tweeted. The primary user of this rocket is the next generation Starlink constellation, so science does not need to cover fixed cost. When will Starship launch into orbit? Over the past six months, SpaceX has gradually increased the number of Raptor engines it ignites during its Starship static fire tests. For instance, the organization had previously only tested one engine at a time on Booster 7 and the Starship prototype, performing the first multi-engine static fire test on August 31st. Both SpaceX CEO Gwynne Shotwell and Musk stated earlier this summer that Starship could launch into orbit from May to August. A September launch doesn't seem likely given the schedule for SpaceX's full-stack static fire test. That does not imply that the world's largest rocket won't soon launch into orbit. We've seen Starship prototypes launch previously and perform insane flip maneuvers, but unlike NASA's much-delayed SLS rocket, which continues to sit on the launch pad ahead of the probable launch this month, therefore, it's too difficult to imagine the actual object going into orbit very soon. So are you all waiting for the launch? When do you think the launch will take place? Let us know in the comment section below. Let's hope it will take place in a few weeks.